Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe and that way you never miss an episode when I have something to talk about. Um, what I am going to talk about is not fully read related, but it's sort of read related. Um, first of all, the first synchronicity that happened uh, was that someone emailed me recently and asked uh, advice about endurance. Um, said that her embouchure was really collapsing, she was really struggling um, to like get through her recital material and that sounded very resonant and I've made a video on uh, endurance before um, which is in my feed here somewhere and I shared that with her. But it also made me think about the time that I was getting ready for a Mozart concerto performance. And I like a week before, I just couldn't get through the thing. I was really suffering and struggling. And it seemed that only one read in my case actually enabled me to play all the way through. But the fact that I had one read that enabled me to play all the way through and everything else was a struggle made me go, hmm. And I explored further and it turned out that all of you know, I had, we all, we all run read experiments, right? And we pendulum around. It turned out that the phase I was in was that all of the reads that I, all but one of the reads I had were a little bit uh, flat, a little bit flabby, just like the littlest bit. I was reaching down to really find the pitch floor, the depth of the pitch, and all of them sat just a little bit on the low side, which is fine for most of the time. But when you're playing the Mozart concerto, it, everything you do lives up in the thumb octave and side octave uh, registers. Um, it can be super exhausting to have to hold on to a reed that is flat at all. And even though I didn't really register that the reeds were flat or were flabby, because as oboists, we're always compensating for the reed du jour and just like doing whatever it takes to make things work. So I was making things work, but it was immediately exhausting all of the little muscles of my embouchure. And therefore it felt as though my embouchure was collapsing except on this one read that happened to be, and not this read, but <laughs> that one read that happened to be um, up, that happened to be holding its pitch up really well, and on which I could easily play through the whole thing twice, if need be. Um, and so in that case, it really was a read issue. But then the next synchronicity around this is that we were talking in my uh, Invincible Oboist Flow program yesterday about the uh, similarities between running and playing the oboe. And there are a lot, right? And I've written about them, about those similarities a jillion times on my blog. So many, right? That's all about uh, air, air, but really it's not about needing a tremendous amount of air, not the way I run anyway. It's about being comfortable enough with your air being a little heightened, right? Being comfortable with your heart rate being a little elevated and with feeling a little bit out of breath, but not actually dying. Um, and knowing that you're not actually going to die, you're just jogging. That feeling um, for me is a really good parallel to playing the oboe when like we get to the end of a phrase and we are a little bit out of breath, but it's okay. And having comfort with being just a little bit okay with that um, makes the oboe good. And there are so many other parallels, but the specific one that I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, I'll be running sometimes and I'll feel really tired as though like I can't run one more step. I really need to stop and walk. I really want to quit what I'm doing. And nearly always, if I then look at what I'm doing and try to make it easier, try to make it more efficient, try to make it more smooth, um, immediately it feels easier and I can keep running and running for really as long as I need to. So it's the difference between when I'm running <laughs> and like really working versus just like letting myself sort of float across the ground and using my body in an efficient way. And if you go outside and you try this, you'll immediately feel the difference, right? If I think about being smooth and using forward motion rather than up and down motion, it gets easier and your endurance improves because you're using your body more efficiently. And the same is true on the oboe. Um, the, because the third thing that I've been struggling with 
and this is related both to reeds and to oboe playing, um, is a Bach concerto, the F major concerto that I'm going to be performing in a few weeks down in central Illinois. And I've been playing through it because it's important to have full run-throughs and it's been grueling for me. And uh, I've been really struggling. My It feels as though my uh, corners are falling apart by the ends of the, of the lines, um, the ends of the movements. And you know, I, I feel like I'm stressed for air and I'm uncomfortable and it feels like I'm never going to get through all three movements in a row. And because I had had that email conversation with the woman who was struggling with her endurance, I was like, ooh, maybe it's a read thing. And so I talked with my friends in read club about how I was trying to balance my reads and make them better so that I could get through this whole Bach concerto. And then I thought about playing more efficiently. And it became, it was an immediate difference when I changed my mindset, when I changed my, my plan from approaching the piece, which is like stylish and energized, but it's also a lot of work. Um, and I asked myself, what would this feel like if it was easy? What would it feel like if the oboe was easy to play? to me, I, and I'm not sure if it will be on the video that I've just made, but it was really noticeably uh, noticeable to me how much easier it felt to play through the whole piece when I just let my air be calm, when I let my body be relaxed, when I uh, didn't try to like help every single note with extra energy, extra special energy, when I just let the overall arc of the air speak for me. And of course, this is what I teach, right? I talk about this all the time in my group programs, in one-on-one -on -one lessons, um, in my warm-up, uh, warm-up your warm-up series, which I'm doing right now. It's all, uh, it's all part of my philosophy of oh, we're playing. Like, let's let it be easy so that it's easy. And um, I guess sometimes I forget too. Sometimes it is a read thing. Sometimes it is um, a practicing more thing, but often, I think, the solution is to just let it be easy. Uh, I hope that this has felt a little bit helpful. Um, it's been a five minute Readmaker lesson, although it's not so much, much about the, uh, the reads right now. Um, if you, would like to get in touch with me. You can find me at JanetIngle.com, which is also where you could order Reeds or Cane, or find out more information about Reed Club, or The Invincible Oboist, or uh, any of the jillion things I do, uh, or read my blog. Um, and if you email me and have any questions about the oboe or Reeds that you would like me to address in future videos, you could reach out to me from there too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.